All right, Professor Klein back here in the Ohio University Human Anatomy Lab to bring you one more video, another video using the whiteboard and the kidneys. Let's begin. All right, I got two here and I kind of twisted them around. These are not life size. These are huge kidney models. I'll kind of zoom in and and show you guys this. I will be going through the anatomy real quick in a moment. But on the human body, they're very much in the posterior aspect of the abdominal cavity. So I put them way back here so that you guys can see where these kidneys might be. And today I wanna to talk about what makes up the kidney, how does blood flow through the kidney, and why are those things connected? So hang with me here for this video and I will explain all of that in this video. First up, the kidney anatomy. So you got two of them and here's a picture of the kidneys popping up on your screen. We got a lot of models in the lab here. Here's another model talking about the kidneys and the ureter and the bladder. And the main thing you gotta know right here is that you got a right and left kidney and you got something on top called the super renal gland here's a link to this actual model video me walking through this video this model video here but i want to talk about this model and this model has got a couple of key things on it we got the renal artery and the renal vein we got the ureter is something called the renal pelvis right in this area. Now the renal pelvis is this funnel. The entrance way, I call this the entrance to the kidney, right where the artery is entering and the vein is leaving and the ureter is leaving, is something called the renal hilum. My probe is showing you the hilum and it's very much like a doorway, opening and closing into the liver. So that's the hilum. This area here would be called the sinus. The sinus includes minor calyxes, which are these structures branching off a renal pyramid. All these things are renal pyramids right here. And the tip, see that tip right there? That tip is called the renal papillae. Renal papillae is the tip and the minor calyx surrounds it's like a tube that surrounds the renal papillae now one two three three or four minor calyxes merge into a major calyx so this would be like a a major calyx right here major calyx right here and here and those the major calyxes merge into the renal pelvis the renal pelvis turns into the ureter and like i showed you with this model the ureters is a tube, ureters, plural, right and left, goes down to the bladder. All right, more anatomy though, because we gotta say, well, all of these here, these renal pyramids together is the renal medulla, the area with all the pyramids are the renal medulla, which makes this area up here See how there's a little bit of space on the top here and it would travel over. The kidney is 3D, so make sure you're seeing a 3D image of it here, a 3D model. And this is called the renal cortex, renal cortex. Now the renal capsule is, see that really thin layer here? We get the magic probe and points at this thin layer, this is called the renal capsule. Different from the renal cortex and the renal medulla, which includes the pyramids. Now what's the space in between the pyramids? It's called the renal column. Renal column is in between the pyramids. And all of those make up the kidney. That's the kidney right there. And major function of the kidney is to filter water and electrolytes and keep the pH balance in your body normal. This is a giant filter 
for blood. So we need to know blood coming in, but where is the blood going first? Well, it's going to something called the nephron. And the nephron is a five part system, a five part structure that filters the blood and will eventually turn out urine. So when I talk about the urine pathway, the urine pathway is first started in the nephron. Now nephrons, and I'm going to bring in another model here. Here's another great model video to this model walkthrough. I'll teach you guys this as well if you go to this video. But I'm right here, I'm just going to tell you briefly that we have these nephrons. So see these things up here? It almost looks like a, like a garden or a farm or something up here with some tubes coming off of it, those things are the nephrons. Got the pyramids, but mainly the nephrons are in the renal cortex. And if I come over here, this is one pyramid, and now you can see some structures that make up the nephron. This includes the entire nephron. So let me just point out some things on here. Let me get a better hold on it. These circle things are called renal corpuscles. Renal corpuscles is what this is here. A renal corpuscle includes a glomerulus, which are these blood vessels, capillaries, inside, balled up, and Bowman's capsule. See this capsular area here? This Bowman's capsule surrounds the glomerulus right so my hand would represent the other side of the capsule bowman's capsule plus the glomerulus equals the renal corpus that's part number one of the nephron and in fact this is where the majority of the filtration is occurring keeping it going though this tube coming off the renal corpus is called the proximal convoluted tubule proximal convoluted tubule if I look over here see how this tube twists and turns and does an s curve that's the proximal convoluted tubule and it eventually turns into something called the loop of Henle now the loop of Henle is this giant loop here and it can loop low or it can stay up pretty high but the loop the loop is always going to go into the renal pyramid. So now we're in the renal pyramid here a little bit, but not for long. We go back up and we turn into something called the distal convoluted tubule. Distal convoluted tubule, part number four of the nephron. And finally, we finish in the collecting duct. Finish in the collecting duct. And I've drawn that on the board. I'm holding this for you here. I've drawn it on the board. So this is this right here. And you can see renal corpuscle, proximal convoluted tubule, PCT, loop of Henle, and look just at the black. The black loop is the loop of Henle, aka the nephron loop. Then it comes up to the DCT, and then it goes over to the collecting duct. Collecting duct is the fifth part of the nephron. Now, before the collecting duct, this is called filtrate. It can be water, it can be sodium, it can be potassium, electrolytes, you know, filtering things in and out. And those are the normal things. It can also have glucose, blood, protein, ketones, bilirubin. Check out this video here if you want to learn more about what a urine analysis test could tell you of what's in your urine. Lots of stuff in the urine. And that can tell you a lot clinically as well. But normally it's water and some electrolytes. But once it's in the collecting duct, it is going out of the body. So where's it going next? Well, here, it's coming down and it goes to the tip of the pyramid. You guys remember what the tip of the pyramid was called? switch it on over it's called the renal 
Papele. So this collecting duct right here, I'll zoom all the way in, travels down the collecting duct through the renal pyramid, through the renal papilla into a minor calyx. Here's a minor calyx right here. The minor calyx is merged into the major calyx. The major calyx merges into the renal pelvis. And to bring in the other model, the other model you guys saw, you can see inside the renal pelvis right here. That's the last part before it leaves through the hilum and goes into the ureter. That's the pathway of filtrate or urine, right? But I still haven't answered the question of how blood gets in there. That's good, rewind it, watch it again if you wanna know just the urine pathway. But how does blood get in there? Let's take a look. First, and I do have another picture over here. I'm gonna reference this a little bit here as well as this model and this very heavy model. I'm getting, a, getting an arm workout in here, holding this thing for you guys, but I do it because I love you and care about your education. So let's do it. Here, we have the renal artery. The renal artery is outside the kidney, and once you get into here, it now becomes the segmental artery. The segmental artery, and you can see a bunch of them all over the place, are the arteries within the sinus. The segmental will go up to what's called the interlobar artery. Interlobar artery. That's in between the pyramids, as you can see here and all around, which would be the renal column. So the ones within the renal columns are the interlobar arteries. Now those come up and those start to go horizontal across here and form the arcuate artery. Arcuate artery. And one last artery to mention, the one that goes vertical, and you can see them really well over here, it's called the cortical radiate cortico radiate artery and branching off of there if I jump over here so inner lobar arcuate cortico radiate and then branching off there this is the afferent arterial afferent arterial which merges into the glomerulus and glomerulus are your capillaries. Let me go to here. Afferent arterial. And how do I know this is the afferent arterial? It's bigger. It's bigger than the efferent arterial over here. So afferent is coming in. This is all the glomerulus in here. These blood vessels, capillaries in here. And then it leaves via the efferent arterial question for you. Why is the afferent arterial larger than the efferent arterial with the glomerulus? It definitely is, but the question is why? And if you're thinking to yourself, well, you told us a little bit ago, you said this is where things are filtered out of the blood. And when you filter things out, you remove water, you remove electrolytes, which makes whatever's coming out of the glomerulus less. If you have less stuff coming out, it's going to be a smaller blood vessel to carry it. It's like if you're making spaghetti, I love spaghetti, big pasta guy here, love spaghetti. You take the spaghetti and you, once it's done cooking in the, the pot, boiling the pot of spaghetti, you put it in a strainer. This is a strainer, right? And you hold up the strainer and the water drains out of the strainer. Well, when you put it back in the pot or on your plate, it has less water than it did when it was boiling, right? Because you drained all that water. The same thing's going on here. After the afferent arterial goes through the glomerulus and leaves via the efferent arterial, it's got less stuff in it. 
because a lot of it has gone through into what we call this capsular space. Capsular space here through the proximal convoluted tubule. Proximal convoluted tubule goes down, nephron, you know the urine pathway. It was early in this video. But let's finish the blood flow pathway. How do we get out of the glomerulus? Well, we're not done with the nephron yet. If I come in here and you can see, let's go here, the afferent arterial glomerulus efferent. Take a look here. There's this kind of network of blood vessels. I'm gonna jump to the board, because the board I think shows it really well. Efferent arterial, after the, the large afferent comes into the glomerulus, it goes through something called the peritubular capillaries. Peritubular capillaries are around the PCT and the DCT. If it's convoluted, it's got the peritubular capillaries around it. Because after the glomerulus, you can still reabsorb things. You can still secrete things. There's a little bit of exchange going on in those convoluted tubules. And as you come down, you form something called the vasa recta surrounding the lupa henle, vasa recta. And this is typically where the artery, or sorry, the arterial goes to the capillary, which goes to the venule and now you're on the veins. Because after the Lupa Henle and the DCT, it's the collecting duct, not a lot of blood vessels with the collecting duct. Because inside the collecting duct is urine and you want urine out of the body. Okay, where's the blood going from the cortico radiate? And stop the video if you are confused or doesn't make sense and rewind it. It's not, not going to make any sense from here if it hasn't already. So go back, watch it, rewatch it, come back and catch me right here. But if you're ready for the next steps, the next steps are the opposite of how you got in. So what we're doing is we're going through the cortico radiate and let me jump back to this model here. We're going down the corticoradiate vein to the arcuate vein where my probe is now is the interlobar vein the segmental vein and the segmentals merge into the renal vein and the renal vein merges into the inferior vena cava back to the heart This is really exhausting. Not only for your brain, but your body might even hurt after learning this because it's just so stressful, right? I get it, take time on this. Give yourself some time when you're learning. Don't expect to know it right away. Unless you all have a photographic memory or are a super genius, which I definitely am not, it takes time. When I first learned this, I had to draw it and redraw it and test myself and teach others. Give yourself plenty of time to learn this anatomy, but that was the blood flow in to the glomerulus and then out as well. All right, that is it for this video. Hit like, hit subscribe, get my new videos that I release at least one, at least one each week. I've been averaging about two or three because I got a ton of videos to bring you guys. We got over three hundred models in this lab and there's a ton to talk about so subscribe and share this video but i'm professor klein from the human anatomy lab at ohio university thanks for watching